Hello, my dear viewers. Welcome back to your health channel. It's SL Health Podcast. And it's a gentle reminder about subscribing this channel and hit the bell icon. And also, please leave a comment that saying that I have subscribed your channel. Thank you very much. Coming back to the topic. Today, we'll discuss a few things about pericarditis. What is pericarditis? It is inflammation of the tissue sac around the heart. Heart is the organ which pumps out blood all through the body. And heart is covered with a tissue sac, which is called pericardium. That pericardium can get inflamed and can cause pain. In addition to pain, it can cause further com complications like it can lead to pericardial effusion. What is a pericardial effusion? Effusion is a collection of fluid inside this tissue sac, in between the heart and this tissue sac, right? If this pericardial fluid collection is getting worse and if it become chronic or if it become fibrosis, then it can lead to collapse of the heart spaces and cardiac function can go down and also it can lead to chronic pain okay then if we come in, if you come back to the what kind of pain it causes is the pericarditis it causes it's usually it causes central chest pain it's a diffuse pain and it increases in severity at the depth of respiration, which is called somewhat similar to pleuritic chest pain, which occurs in cases of pleurisy. That means inflammation of the pleura. The pleura is the similar kind of tissue, tissue sac which surrounds the lung. But now we are talking about pericardium. It is a tissue sac surrounding the heart. In this video, we are talking about inflammation of the pericardium, right? It causes, increases pain with respiration. When a person gets an inspiration like this, patient feels like give away and feels more pain at the center of the chest. And usually it's not the sides of the chest, it's more diffuse move towards the center, right? And one other important feature is the severity of pain can be altered by assuming a posture. If a patient lies on the back and lies on a bed and on his or her back, the pain severity can go up or else pain score goes up and pain will be more severe. But pain can be relieved by if a patient leans forward like this, leans forward like this. That means the severity of pain is affected by the posture. Basically, it gets relieved if a patient assumes this posture, leans forward like this. This feature signifies you may have pericarditis. And what are the other supportive features for pericarditis? That means what are the other clinical features or any features in the patient's history which can predict possibly this can be pericarditis. And usually, and there may be history of recent viral or bacterial respiratory tract infection, usually one to two weeks before, or maybe even a couple of days. Therefore, pericarditis can be preceded by a recent respiratory tract infection. And additionally, patients may have fever. And most importantly, it can cause some shortness of breath symptoms and generalized unwellness and systemic features. That means the symptoms are not confined to the chest. Patients may feel generalized ill health, lethargic, feverish, those kind of things. As I always mention in my videos, which I do regarding chest pains, this chest pain 
cannot be diagnosed by the patient on his or her own. This every chest pain should be addressed by a healthcare personnel because it should be properly triaged and properly investigated and some features of chest pain can be mimicked by other causes of chest pain like even though I mentioned that this chest pain can get better when you lean forward there are other causes of chest pain which may have the same feature another thing is before the diagnosis you may need a ECG electrocardiogram a chest tape and may need a chest x-ray meaning the heart scan which is called echocardiogram therefore and the most important thing is even your chest pain is similar to pericarditis pain which i described you need to be assessed by a healthcare personnel before starting treatment so what kind of treatment is available for pericarditis an anti-inflammatory treatment is the mainstay of treatment like NSAIDs and steroids but it depends on whether you have a pericardial effusion or not that means presence of fluid in this tissue sac between the heart and the, this tissue pericardium if there is fluid which compresses your heart which can affect circulation it can collapse the heart you know heart is the organ which pumps out blood into the system therefore heart should get filled up adequately before pumping out adequate blood the filling up of the heart can be compromised if there is fluid around the heart compressing the heart it's like we put a balloon inside a basin and put water inside and there will be pressure inside the balloon increased because of this water outside it's a similar scenario occurs in pericardial effusion in the context of pericarditis if there is fluid in therefore pressure dynamics volume dynamics all changes all change and cardiac output that means effective volume which is pumped out of by the heart can be reduced which is called cardiac tamponade in you know there's a right heart and left heart the left heart pumps out blood all through the body and left heart pumps out blood into the lungs therefore workload of right heart is less than the left heart therefore right heart has low pressure system left heart has high pressure system therefore when there is this kind of pericardial effusion or tissue fluid be in between the heart and the tissue sac the first chamber to affect in the heart is right ventricle that means the right the main ventricle the main chamber of the heart in the right side like likewise pericarditis can affect the cardiac functions and if it is mild and if it does not have any significant fluid collection it only causes pain it settles on its own there are medications like ibuprofen colchicine and sometimes prednisolone steroids these medications which can change the direction of this disease or it can make it better and early treatment is important because if it is not treated properly with anti-inflammatory or steroids it can lead to chronic pericarditis that means in early stages pericarditis is reversible and some of the cases are self-limiting it can settle on its own but if it is severe if it is going on and going on it can lead to fibrosis of this tissue sac which can cause chronic constrictive pericarditis what does that mean that means the tissue sac, sac around the heart can get fibrosed and treatment cannot reverse its effect it, its fibrosis therefore heart will get trapped inside this fibrous tissue sac, sac and it can't get contracted and relaxed properly will with it will affect the the 
flow dynamics and pressure dynamics and volume dynamics of the heart eventually it will affect the circulation okay this is about pericarditis i try to explain with simple in simple terms if you have any problems please comment below and at the same time don't forget to subscribe this channel and also leave a comment saying that i have subscribed this channel thank you very much see you later bye bye